Welcome folks. Uh, this video now is going to be about my uh, 74 GTO, the history of it, how I acquired it, uh, what I've done to it, and how much money I have into it. But before we get started, uh, if you've been following my videos, I just painted my red 85 Corvette. So I'll just have a quick uh, shoot of that. I just painted it yesterday. I did a video of it when it was still in the garage here, masked up. And I pulled it out. I put on the uh, the new Corvette emblem there and on the back. And it still needs to be detailed up. It's probably got a little bit over spraying the windows and stuff. That is it there. I retaped that emblem there. And that's a new one there. So as you can see, it turned out pretty, pretty good. And hopefully it'll last a long time. It's a base coat with a with the Nason uh, clear coat. Okay. So this car started with an engine that I had. I had a junk 1970 Bonneville with a 455 in it car wasn't worth anything was wrecked but the 455 purred like a kitten so my goal was to get a car to put the engine in now when I was a kid I had a couple of these Le Mans's you've seen some of my videos there this is the this car I acquired after the yellow one and this is my flying purple people eater it's in great shape I got a video of it so, this car I bought before that, but I was looking for 70 to 72 Le Mans GTO. And uh, I thought, well, my backup, if I can't find one of them cheap, I'll find a Ventura or preferably a GTO, which I didn't think I would find. So, because I'm, I'm cheap when it comes to buying these cars to restore, because I need everything. There's... There were some 70, 72 Le Mans's for five grand and they were just rust bucket piles of shit. And there's no way I was gonna pay no five grand for a Le Mans that was beat to hell and spend it. So this car come up on, I believe it was Facebook Marketplace, might have been Craigslist. Uh, a couple of years ago, about two, but, well, it might have been about three years ago. So it come up for 1500 and it was in Houston, which is about seven hours away from me. And I thought, I can't pass this up. So I contacted the guy, I said, I'll be there tomorrow. And of course, it didn't look like this. It looked like just a pile of junk. Uh, it was had some rust on it, dented up, scratched up. Uh, the, the guy had the engine uh, taken apart on a engine stand all the pieces laying on the floor he was going to rebuild it it's just a complete mess but 1500 bucks with a title and it was a gto now a gto they only made uh 7, something of these in 74. so we'll go with uh, the pontiac motors uh doesn't matter what size cubic inch they are they're all the same size and weight they're not like a Chevy small block and a Chevy big block so if anybody says a Pontiac big block well they don't know what they're talking about so the Pontiacs whether it's a 326 a 350 a 389 a 400 uh, 428 455 they're all the same size so they will fit in whatever uh, if a car came with a 350 like this one, this was the biggest biggest engine they had in 74 was a 350 The 455 drops right in there like it was like it was a 350 So a lot of uh, these uh, Ventura and uh, GTO type Cars People put the 455 in them because they fit right in no alterations or anything so I bought this, 
for 1500 I, I didn't even talk the guy down I just said I'll be I'll be there tomorrow and I left and, and went there and uh, now he had bought I got it written down here he had bought a whole bunch of new uh, engine parts a stroker kit uh, which was new pistons rods crank bearings uh, timing chain set all kinds of stuff all brand new in the boxes so he gave me all that too now his story was this was his dream car that he was gonna build but apparently his wife wore the pants in the family and he said his wife says uh, we're selling the house and moving and you're not bringing that pile of junk with you so uh, he even gave me his brand new engine hoist and a brand new engine stand. I got that in with the 1500 too. So after I bought it, I put it on one of my Facebook groups for Pontiacs. And a guy uh, immediately wanted all them brand new engine parts. And I sold it to him for $750. So that knocked it right down to me only paying $750 for the car. And I sold the hoist, since I already had one, to a friend of mine for 150 So you can knock 900 off that. Now I'm down to 600 That's what I paid for the car. Okay, plus I had the engine. And that was another, that's another long story, but I had a old Cadillac Eldorado that I uh, traded for the Bonneville. The Eldorado I paid $200 for. The other Pontiac I've made a thousand dollars on the parts of it so this engine was free okay so and you have to excuse I'm bordered by dirt roads my cars here just get filthy with the dust from them and now it's springtime all the trees have bloomed and you can wash a car and within two hours it's full of green pollen crap from these trees so I just rinsed this off I didn't even bother scrubbing it perfectly clean because uh, it'll just get dirty tomorrow it'll be dirty again so here's the engine now if you're an enthusiast first thing you'll notice is the scoop ain't right the scoop I mounted to the hood I bonded it uh, with urethane and why is I had the original air cleaner and mount for the carburetor but I had it in my garage and when one of my helpers was helping me on the brakes or something I went to pull it in the garage and uh, I think the brake worked once and then it, it, it went right to the floor as I was pulling it in and there was my scoop and air cleaner bracket and everything and I ran right over it crushed them so this scoop is from a, a Trans Am that I got at my local wrecking yard. And I tried to fit it on the air cleaner uh, carburetor and uh, it was just off about two inches and I don't know why, whether the engines had my helper mount that in there, but uh, that is one thing that maybe the mounts were different on the on the Bonneville, but it, it it fit right in there and uh, you go underneath and it looks perfectly aligned drive shafts aligned everything's aligned perfectly so I don't know why this why the hood scoop wouldn't line up but anyway it's mounted like that now so it's not a true shaker it should have been from the factory uh, I got my list but I think I've uh, bought a new wiring harness for it so you see some of these wires one over there I don't know what it goes to uh, but I thought this was HEI but nope after I bought the harness and everything had all different plugs for the points and the, the deal for the voltage regulator and all that stuff and I found out that this this come as as points of course I didn't want it as points I bought a, I believe that's one of them, $50 distributors from eBay, HEI, and I had that already, and uh, everything, so when I bought my new harness, 
it was to come as the factory and they actually built it all coated so then I had to redo some wiring to make the uh, HEI work so it's a little bit rigged uh, it is a factory AC car as you can see but I don't have the belt or in it's plus it's not charged up but I just put it all in there uh, a friend of mine gave me this radiator it's it's a little oversized uh, I think he said it was out of Corvette, but I don't I don't know. But it actually fit and the hood closes. I was worried about this deal here. Uh, but now that I got a problem with the battery. I kind of got it in a little battery and tucked halfway underneath the fender for now. Uh, but anyway, it it works. So that's the engine part. The interior was pretty much the way I bought it other than these door panels here were covered in a white vinyl <coughs> material and I peeled them all off and this is what was underneath it's kind of cracked uh, I did buy these GTO emblems here uh, these are some universal pull straps but they work uh, the problem is and I bought a uh, you see all new weather stripping here uh, I bought all new for trunk weather stripping, door weather stripping, anything I could. Of course, this car is based off the Nova. You know, you got the Chevy Nova, the Olds Omega, Pontiac Ventura, and Buick Apollo, uh, all based on the same car. So you can get some stuff like weather stripping. So here's the factory seats. I think they were must have been recovered at one time. Just the front, the back was all cracked. You see, I got some type of tape up there. Uh, I can like my Chevelle. I can buy this upholstery, but it's a lot more than a Chevelle. Don't know why, but it's a couple hundred bucks. I kind of redid the back deck, put some speakers in, uh, and of course these type of cars got a lot of plastic. So a lot of this plastic was damaged and the biggest one of the biggest expenses is this headliner it's a one-piece deal there's only one company that makes it and it's 500 bucks so I wasn't about to buy that uh, carpet is actually in pretty good shape it must have been replaced at one time uh, it's got some few bad spots but I, I said I haven't done anything to the seats or the carpet uh, I did buy this dash cover on it. Lots of gauges. Had a stereo from one of my junkers. Uh, let's see. Shifter. It works. But it doesn't. There's a little pin missing and it doesn't lock it in park. So it just kind of goes down. But it's one of these. I'll start it up right here. that shifter but it doesn't lock into park so that's one thing I'll have to fix too I mean this car is I don't know 80 80 percent done because it needs a little shifter deal the headliner the back seat recovered uh, you can see here this little chrome piece for the remote mirrors missing this door panel I think these door panels here were actually $500 new also. Uh, it needs an exhaust system like my Chevelle. I just used the uh, two pipes from the manifold and uh, they were performance uh, mufflers from that Bonneville. And I just kind of put them about halfway just to put some type of exhaust on it. But it really needs like my Chevelle and have uh, probably headers and new pipes and new mufflers coming down. So I haven't done that either. Uh, turn it off. As you can 
see she just starts right up. She's one's great. Uh this chrome here is damaged. I can't find them. Been, I haven't been looking lately, but uh I finished this car about uh about a year or so ago. Uh, I need this little piece of chrome here. So it was all bent up. It's actually banging into the door and it was all messed up in this door area. I think I put in new door pins and so it closes and stuff all right, but it was all hitting and uh, and the other problem is these plastics here in the bumper. These deals, nobody makes them. You know, I could probably, I think somebody mentioned uh, some guy makes them out of fiberglass. Uh, and this is bubbled up. See, it's bubbled up here. And I can use a heat gun and heat it down. But then after a few minutes, it comes right back up. So it's all kind of bubbled up there. And this side's cracked. Uh, this side, I'm going to try to put these pictures in with these videos of the process but there I put it in a big patch panel and it wasn't that bad of rust on it but when I was towing it from Houston I had a tow dolly at the time and I had to bring my own tires because his tires were shot that were on this car and I had a wider tire on there and it was rubbing while well, going on down the highway it blew and it kind of blew that whole quarter panel out and all that little rust that looked like little rust all got exposed so it was all so anyway, I bought a patch panel for that side. <coughs> okay, so... So that's basically what I paid for the car. 1500 minus 750 and 100 minus 900. I had 600 into the car. Now we'll go over what... Oh, I also sold, I probably have it here on my list, of a minus. Oh, the old engine that was in it, I sold it to a guy for 300 It was all taken apart and worn out. So you can minus that 300 also. So what's that, 1200 1200 that means I, I got 300 for the car in it. Okay, so what did I buy for it? Uh, bought the rear air, air shocks for $82.17. My helper put it in, but they leak. He didn't, a connection or something, and I haven't even bothered. I did buy air shocks, and I bought uh, shackles. But, oh, yeah, okay, the shackles were forty four fifty eight. You can see the shackles under here, jack it up a little bit. But I'll, go, I'll get around to fixing those air shocks. Uh, front wheel well, $89. I think that must have been one of them inner fenders. Uh, the right quarter panel patch panel I told you about. That was only $47.36. The rims and tires I bought off a guy for $250. $15 for new lug nuts. $20 for a battery tray. $48.50 for a distributor, $61 for an engine gasket set, okay, can I add that $500? I put down $500 as what the engine was worth to me out of the parts car, but I'm not sure that's in the total, probably is. Uh, windshield washer reservoir $24.95, the wiring harness was $250, uh, the lock set with the trunk and the doors and everything uh, was $38.95. Spark plug wires were $34.95. Front shocks were $64.22. The door pins for the driver's door was $13. The body mount kit was $81.96. Uh, $100 in poor 15. Now the car wasn't a rust bucket. It was really just around the lips of the quarters and uh, just had surface rust along the floor and trunk and stuff. And I, I uh, coated everything with pour 15. Okay, uh, window seals, $29.95. Emergency brake cable, 14 
speedometer 1440 uh, fuzzies the door fuzzies that go in between the uh, outside and inside windows was uh, $95 I think that was inner inner uh, anyway it's for all four <coughs> uh, the door weather stripping I showed you earlier is 46 the rubber stopper kit was 20 that was a little stoppers uh, the uh, originally I bought a quart of paint because I did all the uh, uh, door uh, door jams and under the trunk a quart of that some primer and some welding wires a hundred bucks another 40 and pour 15 22 dollars in new spark plugs 119 dollars for that dash cap I showed you uh, brake pedal cover ten dollars a vented gas cap 16 uh, AC heater switch $38 trunk rubber 27 stereo and speakers and wires a hundred tachometer $20 which I haven't gotten hooked up it's one of those cheap uh, deals there and I, I never did figure out how to hook that up I didn't even try the GTO door panel emblems I showed you, they were 66. Those universal pull handles were 40. The Pontiac trunk emblem was 44. That was pretty pricey for that. 455 decals for the scoop was $8. And then these four GTO decals, one on the front, back, and two side fenders were 48. A six-piece door handle set was 42. Uh, this is factory yellow. Uh, I don't have it written here. I don't know if it was sunstorm or sunburst yellow. I think it was code 50. It's code 51, code 52. So that is the factory paint. I had my local store mix that up uh, in that Nason 2K. If you watch my other videos, that's what I painted my Chevelle with. I love that paint. This paint will last forever. Now, the stripe is my own design. I designed that stripe based off of kind of a, a Ventura Rally 2 type stripe and a Nova Rally type stripe. I looked and looked and looked at them all, and this is the stripe I came up with. And then, like my Chevelle, I painted black along the bottom. And what I did was I put in some of that uh, flattener is I wanted it flat black or semi-gloss black not completely flat just semi-gloss and it didn't do anything so it's glossy <laughs> okay and I have down here $200 of labor I paid to help her to do the power steering box So I believe that is everything, that's everything I have written down any, any way that I, I have in it. And the total the total what I have in it, including the price of the car, is thirty five hundred and twenty five dollars and three cents. So that's what I got in it. Here's that front uh, Nobody makes the plastic filler panels. And you can tell, I guess the sun warped it or something. And I had this whole front end apart. I had the fenders, hood, uh, header, grill. I had all that stuff all taken apart. And uh, I think I did, I might have had some holes in the uh, rust holes in the bottom of the fenders. And I fixed all them and then painted it all inner fenders. and header and everything like that and the other thing I need would like to get is these uh, signal covers you can't buy them either now when I bought the car the guy gave me a new set but they were from a 66 or 7 GTO and they looked almost identical except they were a little bit too small so they didn't fit so these are the old ones. I'd like to get a new set. 
luckily I got a good grill because I know them grills are expensive. After I finish the car, a little crack on the windshield here. I, I, I guess when I put this molding on or something, I must have hit something. And later on, days later, it started cracking. It's going all the way up. So now I gotta get another windshield. Don't have to, but uh, to make it more perfect, I will later. Uh, this tint from this window needs to be scraped off from the inside. Uh, so I think that's it on the car. That's the history of it, what I paid for it, what I got in it. Of course, I ain't, ain't including labor. But it's pretty much it. We can go through the. Oh, I'll, sh I'll show you the trunk. Show you all the inside. Now, this trunk must have been leaking. Oh, I say I even got a spare. I got all the trunk undercoated and everything. Uh, underneath this tire here, you can see that there was a big. The guy started. He uh, cut out. It must have been leaking, and and there was a must have been a rust hole there, and he had cut the old one out. I actually got that section from a junkyard. Didn't weld it in, it was just laying in the trunk. So I didn't have to weld in a section of the trunk. In the bottom, not very much. Rest of the trunk and everything was all, all good in it. I think the lower quarters were good. Just really had some rust around the wheel wells. And these are just some, I actually got an extra shifter, but see that's not like the one that's in it. That's not factory. Here's some extra uh, fuzzies. I believe here's here's that little top tack I got and uh, looks like a pain in the ass to, I don't know if I'll ever put that on there or not just a little extra stuff I got in there uh, sending unit that doesn't fit in this car so that's it uh my cars are never 100% finished because they always need a little something. But like I said, it's it runs and drives and it looks good. It's all I care about. I can take it out every whenever I want just to finish it off. The finishing touches is uh, what I'm gonna just wait on. Okay, so that's. Uh, That should do it for this car. That's the history of it and everything. You'll probably see it later on when I do some other videos. It's home is right underneath that carport. And I'll just park it under there. Start it up and wash it every now and then like I do the other cars. I take it out for a, for a cruise. So that's it. You'll probably see it in some other videos once I work on other cars. So... Uh, like, subscribe, comment, share, uh, do all that stuff, hit the notification button if you want to see some more of my videos, see some more of my fleet of cars. I got a whole bunch more here that I'm fixing to restore over the next few years, so I'm not going anywhere. So I will see you all next video.